not the Lulberts. <laughs> it's our <laughs> word. Uh, this is this is not going to be on the, the main Lulberts feed. It's going to be on Patreon. I'm going to render it for YouTube. That's only because I want to test everything. I just uh, finally got a new big rig, which is what I've been needing for the longest time. And I had the money to do it. And I just threw down two grand. And I got like, a nice 4K monitor. Oh, my God. How did I live without 4K before this? I don't know. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um, so I want to test everything and test out the new video card. Everything should be a little bit faster now because it takes like it's it's about one to one. When I when I when I render a video, it takes as long as the video is for it to render, and it's a pain in the ass. Uh, so usually I just let it do it when I sleep or when I'm heading off to work. But I want to see how fast this does this. So it's one of the reasons I gave up. It's one of the reasons I gave up on doing video originally because <laughs> I, I I can't afford a big rig. So I'm I'm rocking two laptops that are both like six seven plus years old. Yeah. And uh, I just gave not I mean, technically, we render a video for the uh, Seeds of Liberty podcast, but it's just the audio with a static picture. So since it's that, I can drop the video settings down to like pretty much nothing because I don't care if the picture doesn't show up crystal clear. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now it only takes 20 minutes. It's great. Yeah. And my air conditioner is running. and I don't care. This is, this is not really about <laughs> I just want to uh, make sure that everything's fine. And I'll, you know, I was I want to check to see how uh uh, the air conditioner really affects it. If not, eh, I'll screw it. I'll just I'll just not bother with it anymore. Besides, it's getting winter time anyway, so I don't really need it. But during the summer, it's like ugh, I have to make the temperature go down to like almost sixty because by the time I'm done, it's like eighty five <laughs> without the air conditioner on. So yeah, if, if I didn't if I didn't have the windows open right now in, in my studio, it would get like that in a hurry because all of a sudden it's hot again today. It was cooler the past couple of days, and now halfway through my walks today, I was like, Jesus, man, it's freaking heating up again. I'm sweating. This is yeah. not cool. It's fucking October. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, things are heating up here in Vegas, but uh, not temperature wise. Just everything, every, oh. all the attentions on us right now, and um, we should talk a lot about this because there's a lot of conspiracies going on like already. And, and they're so bad. They're so – like, I can understand – like, there's a lot of, like, stuff that happened during 9-11 that would make you go, like, hmm, that's interesting. I don't buy it, but still, like, hmm, that's, that is kind of an interesting thing. I have to go and look it up. These things are so – just uh, like, just just on face value are just dumb, 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 dumb. Um, so which ones have you heard of so far? Because I've, I've heard a lot, but I want to make sure that, you know, you probably – you may have heard some – that I haven't, because you know you do hang out well, with Dave. I've, yeah, I've, <laughs> so I, 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 luckily, I actually haven't talked to Dave since this all happened. But <laughs> um, I mean, I, I've heard this I, probably the standard ones. I've tried to stay away from this because they're just every time there's a shooting now, they, the same thing gets rolled yeah. out, and it's you talk about quickly, like within an hour, people are, were already declaring that all oh, this was a you know. A false flag, which of course by that they mean fake, because they don't understand the definition of false flag. It, mean it, to, um, it actually but, did happen. <laughs> like yeah. people did die. Yeah, but the uh, there's mul you know the let's see the multiple shooters one. Um, you know because first I saw the picture of the uh, of of the Mandalay Bay with the two windows knocked out. And people are claiming, oh, there's two windows knocked out. It has to be two shooters. It's like, no, dude, that was in the corner. It was it was on the same room. He yeah, knocked yeah. out two he, windows he like in a, the same room. Yeah, he had a suite. He, yeah, he had a really nice suite, apparently. <laughs> well, it's not nice anymore. Um, well, it used to be. Yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be nice again. So we should talk about the two shooters, because there's like a couple different ones. There's a, the two holes, uh, the two windows. And by the way, like I drove by the next morning just because I was, I, I had to go to Fry's buy a computer, uh, but and I was like, ah, I wonder if I can, I can get, I couldn't get near the strip because they had that all just, you know, closed off. I couldn't even exit the street to get to Fry's that I normally do because it's so close to Mandalay. It was just a mm -hmm. nightmare getting over there. But anyways, so um, I uh, I drove by and I saw the two windows and it was just so creepy and eerily. But you know, there were no other broken windows, uh, especially on the the, the mysterious twelfth floor. Um, that was, that was another thing that the, uh, the second shooter, uh, Oh, I heard conspiracy. the, I heard the fourth, I heard the fourth floor, the ninth floor, yeah. um, and maybe even a couple other ones in there. Oh, you, you can see it in the video. You can yeah. see them coming, you know? And then I also saw what I assumed was clearly Photoshopped pictures of, Ma of the Mandalay Bay with all of a sudden there was like six windows knocked out <laughs> all over the place. I sh shouldn't be laughing, but <laughs> Yeah. Um, I can, this one's really easy to explain. If you've ever been to Vegas, 
a, there's a lot of buildings that are very mirror-y. Um, the Mandalay Bay is definitely one of them. If you look at it, it looks like a giant gold mirror. Um, yeah. The other ones that are like that, um, a lot of the buildings at City Center are like that. Uh, MGM is just basically a giant green mirror. The whole thing is. Um, and you also have these big LED lights and, and neon lights and all these other things. And a lot of them are flashing, like very strobe-like. And I've, I've even wondered, like, I wonder if there's ever, anyone that's ever just walked by and had an epileptic seizure from some of these things. Because they're so big, they're so bright, and they flash bright colors. And when you have all these mirrors all around and they're all just blinking lights against each other, the whole town kind of glitters and it's, 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 it's beautiful. But what you, act, but when you see, when someone's shooting and you see like the little muzzle thing out of the corner uh, of, of the building, that's actually a gunfire. It also looks like a lot of the glitter that's happening on the other side of the building. And there was like one of the videos where they're like, look, 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 here's the video. Like see, he sees it's blinking right here. And I'm like, dude, but it's also blinking like here, 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 and here. <laughs> like I've, I've replayed the video a few times. I'm like, the whole thing is like glittering. And you're, and you're focusing on one little area that glitter, the glitter is just a little bit more. It's like, no, 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 it's not, I'm not buying it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other one is like, you can't shoot that far away. <laughs> oh yeah. Come the, on. Yeah. <laughs> I literally know nothing he, about guns. The argument. I, 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 I am far from an expert on guns, but okay. He was on what the th was it? The 32nd floor. Yeah. So he's shooting. So he's shooting on a downward angle into a gigantic crowd of people that is all compressed into a small area because I think it was they're like all trying to listen. 22,000 people. I think they said was at the, at the event. And this was the, the final show. This is like the big, you know, the big act was there. Yeah. Yeah. It was so yeah, everybody the, was packed. Al Aldine was the headliner, so one of the, or at least one of the headliners. So yeah, of course, everybody's cramped. No, sadly, I well, sadly, I do. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm with Miller Miller on some of this stuff. I listen, to some of the, I listen to some of the same country pop stuff that he does too. Or at least I used to. I don't listen to much music anymore. But yeah, you, you don't have to know much about guns to realize. Okay, you're shooting down. You're, it, it's the barrel of, you know, it's the barrel of fish thing. That's essentially mm -hmm. what you're doing. You don't have to be a you know, a dead shot to be able to, to hit people from that distance, especially if he's, if he's using, you know, if he's shooting rapidly, you just, you know, all you have to do is just tick the rifle back and forth a, a, a mm -hmm. centimeter or two. And you're going to, you're going to hit a whole new crowd of people. <laughs> yeah. And you're also at a downward angle. So it's not like the bulls are fighting to go upwards or fighting to stay straight. They're going down, you know, it's actually, exactly. I, I think it actually may accelerate it a little bit. I don't know. Maybe air will slow it down, but still, you know, all you got to do is just stay in that little range. And it's, you know, it's, I've, I've been to the Mandalay, like my head of, uh, when they had the big Minecraft con, I think it was like 2011, 2012, somewhere like that. My friends came out cause they used to run, like they were used to run a server farm, uh, for Minecraft servers. And they were like, oh yeah, come on up and we'll hang out or whatever. And I went to the room and they had a room facing the strip. And I remember like looking down at everything and seeing everything and yeah, the, you know, Luxor is really close, you know, if, if, I don't remember thinking that, but I'm, but now that this has happened, I remember like what I saw when I was up there and looking down on everything and it, we were kind of high up. I don't think it was on 32, but we were kind of high up and I still remember looking down and going like, yeah, that's, you know, you know, that's pretty close. And now that I'm thinking about it, it's like, yeah, that, that, you know, this could, this is a target rich environment, especially if there was a bunch of people there watching a, a headlining show. Sure. So, Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then, you know, I, I think, oh, I think, well, my favorite meme, I think I've seen come out of this so far, you know, which again, I'm not trying to make light of the people dying, but yeah, I, 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 so, I sort of feel like, you know, I, I, I got my credentials with nine 11 cause you know, I actually lost people in that. Yeah. And, uh, so I feel like I'm safe making certain jokes about these things, <laughs> but was the one, you know, everybody's freaking out. How, how could you have possibly gotten all these guns up to the 32nd floor with nobody noticing them? And somebody just took, somebody had a picture of like a, a cart, you know, one of those, uh, baggage carts from a hotel with just a bunch of different, uh, suitcases packed on top of it. And it's like, here you go. Yeah. They carried, they carried it up for him. It's like, yeah, man, you, you do realize that a lot of these rifles are collapsible to a certain extent. And, uh, you know, you don't need these long gun bags to hold everything and you can put them in a lot of different things Yeah, <laughs> and it wouldn't be as obvious as you would think, but yeah, people's, I mean, my, my first thought, and I think I even posted something about it on Facebook. is just like, anytime one of these events happens, like logic is one of the first things to go out the window. 
Yeah. People just lose their minds and just, you know, become internet detectives and forget all about <laughs> And they're the worst. <laughs> internet yeah, detectives they are really the worst. Are. It is. I mean, it's horrible. But yeah, like so there's I've I mean, I'm sure there's more of the conspiracies. You know, I, I've already seen people trying to tie like his family members because his his dad was such and such at one point. And it's just like really people? Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, like I had a um, one of my when I lived in uh, in Hollyweird, um, one of the guys that I knew was like a fil- like a filmmaker, like that's what he did for a living, and he made like really bad movies. Like, I think he was he was I think he was the executive producer for the Thomas and the Tank Engine movie, you know, with um, Alex Baldwin, Alec Baldwin in it, you know, where he's like sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, he was also like the executive producer for Ringmaster with Jerry Springer. Just bad movies, but you know, hey, it made a living. <laughs> Um, and he was making some kind of like documentary that never got released, uh, with Matthew Marsden. And, uh, I remember he just had like all this, like when, when he was leaving and, you know, he just had like all these cases for, you know, camera equipment, tripods, all that stuff. And it was like a bunch of stuff. (laughs) How many people are going to Vegas to film things for conventions or, uh, you know, to make movies or whatever. And they just, you know, put that stuff in their room, especially they have a huge suite, you know, you come in with a bunch of bags, people are going to be like, Oh, he must be doing something professional or whatever. So that's, that's definitely not out of the question. (laughs) And they will carry it up for you. You just got to tip them. Well, you got to tip the bellboy. Um, or you can lug it up yourself if you're, if you're inclined. Oh, did I lose you? No, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure because I saw your light blinking and I was like, oh, I don't hear anything. <laughs> and this is a new thing. This is all new. It's all new. I'm just testing every no, testing I, water. Well, I noticed that before. I think my light's blinking. It's got to be my mic's got to be picking up the sound from the windows being open because I wasn't but saying I didn't anything, hear anything before. Yeah. And, le- and leaning away. I'm like, why am I blinking? <laughs> it's all sure right. It's picking up. Something. So. Um, so, yeah, that's that's not the, the other ones that I've seen, like people are looking at pictures and finding a little nom- like there was one where. The, the the standard picture you see with him and some Philippine girl um, where he's got his eyes closed. I'm, I'm sure you've seen that picture. That's the yeah, one yeah, I, yeah. It looks like he has is- a 13 tattooed on his neck. And I guess there's I don't know if this one is a real picture, but there's a picture of him dead. And he's got like a, you know, blood all over his face and, and his mouth because it looks like he shot himself in the mouth. And they're like, where's the 13 on his neck? It's like, well, first of all, we don't know if that picture's real. <laughs> Secondly... I don't even think that's a 13 tattoo. I think that's just like a photo anomaly. You know, old people have turkey necks. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, I, yeah, I've seen that one because that's the one that keeps the, that's the one that keeps getting made into mm-hmm. memes. And I've seen a lot of people claim that's the only picture because that's another conspiracy theory. He must be some kind of Patsy or crisis actor because that's the only picture we have <laughs> of this guy anywhere ever. Because um, he's an old bird, guy. Yeah. <laughs> old guys one don't bird. go on Facebook, man. One person Usually. I saw I saw a post that with some questions that I normally wouldn't consider, you know, I wouldn't even think would go down any type of conspiracy route just based on the type of person I know he is. He normally seems to be pretty straightforward with things, but he po- he he posed it as a question, but then, you know, kind of like, what's up with his neck? But then quickly, at least quickly followed it up with, it could be anything. I'm t- I'm currently leaning towards a, a weird angle of the lighting off his Adam, <laughs> Adam's apple because that's just exactly where it was placed. Bro. I'm just asking questions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like okay, but at least at least at least this guy was cognizant yeah. that like you know okay this is this is my current theory that's what it, it's the, you know Occam's razor that's the most likely thing it is yeah and uh, yeah because I've seen that picture and yeah it looks like it could be anything it could be a fold of skin uh, it could just be the lighting it could be the angle it was taken at whatever but yeah people are gonna you know those internet detectives we mentioned before <laughs> that they just they go into like insane mode and they just break out the magnifying glasses and stare at everything and go it must be this <laughs> I, l- I love how uh, these are like blatantly false most of them are the ones where like they'll find like an old dude with a goatee at uh, at a women's rally when he's wearing a pussy hat like this is the same guy and it's like no it's not <laughs> and they'll, they'll find one at a trump rally you know with the maga hat like this is the same guy no it's not they don't even look the same well, that's the yeah. that's the same thing they that's the same thing they do with all those quote unquote crisis actors. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, look, this girl's been everywhere. Yeah, that because they they tried to tie him to that. They were claiming he was the guy Gene, whatever, or something Gene, who was at uh, Sandy Hook, 
Uh, I remember him because I remember watching some of the documentaries about that because I was just curious. You know, I just figured I would watch to see what people were saying about it. Um, but there was one guy who supposedly, you know, ha- helped kids hole up by his uh, by his place after the whole thing. And they're going, look, it's him. It's the same guy. It's like, dude, they both have gray hair. <laughs> That's about it. And a yeah, beard. like <laughs> and a goatee of some sort. Yeah. Hmm. His brother is kind of interesting, though, Eric. <laughs> I, I heard he's done two interviews, but I haven't seen him yet. So. They're, they're, they're kind of entertaining, <laughs> but uh, at the same, like at the same time, he's kind of distressed. But the same, but but he's a, he's a kind of a weirdo, um, p- probably in a good way. The okay, so the other thing is is um, it's kind of like the fog of war, and this this is always kind of true. Like anytime anything is happening, the first initial reports that you're hearing, like about. 70% of everything that you hear at the very beginning is it's garbage. At first, like we were just hearing that that there was a shooting at Mandalay Bay. And and you know, what people were thinking right off the bat was there's someone inside Mandalay Bay shooting people inside of Mandalay Bay. And yes. so my first reaction was like, "Oh crap, you know, like I was dating this girl for a while or once <laughs> who worked <laughs> at Mandalay Bay." And I was like, I better call her and see if she's okay. And I called her and she was like, and she thought the same thing too, because she's only hearing initial reports. She thought people were shooting people inside of the, in, inside of the casino. And she was like, I just left five minutes before the shots started getting fired, I guess. So I lucked out. Wow. But it didn't matter because she wouldn't have been harmed anyway, because she would have left the building <laughs> the other way. Um, but it was like, but you know, at first we were like, "Oh crap!" And then we started hearing things that there were shots fired at New York New York Hotel, that there were shots being fired, uh, shots being fired at Paris. Um, was it Paris Caesar's Palace? Uh, and I believe Bally's. And then there was a, a report of someone walking into the Bellagio with a rifle. So we heard all of these things happening, and we were listening to the police scanner. The police scanner were like, we're sending SWAT team units over to Caesars. We're sending SWAT teams over to Bally's. And they're like, oh, nope, there's no shots fired here. It's a false report. But at first, everybody was like, oh, it's happening everywhere. And so people are pointing out like, oh, look at all these inconsistencies. Why are they saying that there was all these shots fired? Like, how could you not tell if there was a shots fired? It's like... This that's what people do. Like <laughs> they freak out, they hear something, and then they, they you know they re, they give false reports. Um, World's worst, worst game of telephone. Yeah, for for all we know, it could have the, the shooter probably could have set up fake social media accounts to to put false reports as a diversion. That's not out of the uh, out of out of the ordinary. That's happened before. Um, oh yeah, know. that's that's what I was. Yeah. That's what I was. That, that's actually I wasn't even thinking trolls. about social. <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't even thinking about social media though. I was just thinking like, sure, he could have he could have made calls and tipped off the police and said yeah. they're shoot. You know, he could have been the, the anonymous caller who called him in for all the other places. But you know, just just like what you were describing before about how everything, or at least a lot of things in Vegas, are uh, you know they're very tightly packed and a lot of things are big and mirrored. You know, sounds yeah. gonna bounce off of all that crap too. Yeah. So you're not gonna have any. You know, you're you're in some you're in some casino dealing with all the sounds of the slot machines and everybody else talking and all the the din of everything else going on. And if you walk outside and you hear that, you most likely you're gonna have mm-hmm. no idea where that's coming from, unless you're somebody who's a trained marksman who's shot a lot and has been in different scenarios. You know, your instantaneous reaction, most people, I mean, would probably just hit the deck because they have no idea which direction it's coming from, going to anything like that. Yeah. Um, so there was also some some witness stuff. And before I get into the witness stuff, it's it's kind of easy to go over the witness stuff. Um like people have terrible memories. I don't know if you ever seen those studies where, um, like they'll they'll have like the they'll they'll tell someone to watch this video, and you'll see like a bunch of people passing around a basketball, and all of a sudden you'll see like a, so a guy walking out in a gorilla suit, and you know and walk walk through the the frame, and no one notices the, gorilla, the guy in the gorilla. They'd be like, okay, so what did you see? And people are like, oh yeah, I saw the basketball. They were passing it back and forth, and you know they were doing this, and there was a basketball hoop over here, and they're like, did you notice the gorilla? There was a gorilla like, you know, people's memory are just terrible. Absolutely bad. Um, People and often every time you recall things, you tend to like add information and subtract information that really happened or didn't happen. Um, So, yeah. So eyewitness testimonies are absolutely terrible. But there was one that has been passed around that I've seen a lot. That was there was a girl there who said, like, there was a second shooter inside of the the concert because I heard the shot coming from another area. 
and I'm sure we just kind of talked about echoes. Echoes happen, yep. <laughs> especially when you have bullets bouncing off the ground, uh, hitting other things. It sounds a lot like, you know, it sounds like, you know, something loud. It could sure. stir people up. And you have all that adrenaline running through your body. Mm -hmm. You know, of course. And if you've been shot, oh my goodness, <laughs> then you have all kinds of things happening that, you know, you're going to definitely misremember mis things because you're in pain, you know, possibly dying, freaking out. Yep. Yeah, any, any of these situations, it happens all the time. I mean, that's that's why, I mean, even for, for whatever the legal system is worth, you know, that's why eyewitness testimony is not given as much, um, you know, uh, weight as well people think it, you know, according to the movies and stuff, it does. Because, yeah, people are unreliable in that sense. You ask 20 people who watch the same event what happened, and there's a darn good chance you're going to get 20 different stories. Yeah. You know, or at least 15 of them, you know, <laughs> like a couple of people may jive together, but for the most part, because yeah, people just in the heat of the moment, it's really hard. I mean, I, even, even in my situation with what happened to me earlier this year, you know, um, it took me a little while to start piecing everything together. Cause in the heat of the moment, you kind of forget what happened. Cause there's all this, just anytime you have that rush of adrenaline and something out of the ordinary is going on, especially if it's something that strikes fear in you. You can't, you can't, it's, it's almost impossible to trust your own mind. Yeah. It's nuts. <laughs> people yeah. are, and people trip. So that's why yeah. I, I was, and especially when you get like reports, especially like from, from people who are out of, out of the country, you know, who aren't really familiar <laughs> with, with the area and they'll come mm -hmm. in and, and they'll start saying things that are just blatantly like, for example, the 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 nine eleven uh, building seven when BBC was reporting that the building fell, but in the background you can actually see the the tower still standing, and they're like, "That's proof that they were off script, <laughs> like they you know they they didn't get their script uh, timing right." But it's like, no, you have these people that are from Britain. She had a British accent. She didn't know. She's not familiar with the buildings. She could have looked around and saw the building still there, and then just go like, "Is that building seven? I don't know. I don't know what these buildings are. I'm you know I'm you know from England." Um, of course. Yeah. And, you know, you hear one thing, which is, hey, uh, this we're we're, evacu you know, we're evacuating the area because we, we think this building's going to fall. Like, you know, there's too much damage to the building. We're just going to we're just going to let it collapse if it does. So we're clearing the area. Uh, just be be on the lookout because this, this building's going to fall. And then you you in the fog of war and everything that's happening and everything's so crazy that you go back and they say like, oh, yeah, the building fell. You know, because there were so many other buildings that fell on 9-11. And it's kind of the same thing that happened here. You know, like there was one lady who said that she heard someone getting kicked out of the concert because she was like screaming, you're all going to die. We don't know if that's yeah, true. I, I, no. I, yeah, I did hear that one, too. Um, but yeah, the, there's I mean, I I heard a lot. I, well, at least I saw a, a few, you know, there's. Twitter, uh, there's tweets and uh, Facebook posts from people claiming to have been there. And, you know, like I got one sent to me, you know, somebody whose friend was actually there sent them, you know, was posting saying, you know, claiming that the police were telling them something completely different that was going on in the news and that there was. And it's like, OK, but again, you're still getting this knowledge, you know, secondhand. You have no idea if these people are actually there. Um, and even if they are, you can't trust them necessarily. So, and, and, and the police obviously didn't know what was going on because there was all these reports. So to just claim that, you know, inconsistency, mu you know, must equal false flag of some kind or fake, even worse, um, it's just is it's pure insanity because you're just like. You're, this, this, this is just another case, one of those cases of people taking theoretical ideas and, and completely ignoring the reality mm -hmm. of the situation that, yes, in the heat of the moment, you're not going to get accurate information. That doesn't necessarily mean people are giving you inaccurate information on purpose. It's just what they are, you know, what they're able to process in that moment. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> the whole thing is just crazy. Yeah. But I'm, yeah, I remember when this was happening because I was at work and, um, and, you know, like I start work at 10 and, you know, I had gone done my regular things and we didn't notice it because, you know, like we're all busy working. And it wasn't until like, you know, someone actually turned the TV on and was like, oh, crap, there's a shooting at Mandalay. So we, we heard we started hearing about it like maybe I think I started listening to it maybe like 15, 30 minutes after it started. You know, they started reporting on it. Um, 
And then, you know, uh, my, my buddy here in Vegas sent us a link to the police scanner. So we were listening to that, watching the news at the same time and trying to, you know, piece together. And we were like, we don't know what the hell's going on. We're just contacting people that we know. And like, you okay? All right, you're okay? Setting our thing on Facebook, safe on Facebook. And, and even still, by the time, you know, the Facebook had the violent incident safe thing, we didn't, still didn't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, oh, they were shooting at a country concert? Oh, okay. That's definitely not me. <laughs> I'm sure everybody will be know that I'm okay. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you 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 are one of, you are one of the few people that I know out that way. <laughs> well, you you and my pop. And when I heard it was a country concert, I'm like, oh wait a minute, my dad could be there. But then I heard it was Jason Aldean, and I'm like, nah, he's he's my dad's old country. He's not into the new yeah. crap. So I, I was pretty say I was pretty sure that he wasn't there. And then I found out a little while later that he definitely wasn't. But it's still like you were talking about how people from outside the area don't necessarily know the layout of things and they mm -hmm. don't know how you know, I'm one of those people. I've never been to Vegas. So even though my first thought for like somebody like you and my pop were like, oh, they wouldn't be at that particular event. I still didn't understand logistics. It's like, well, they could be walking down the street on the other side of it, going to something else. I don't fucking know what the hell is around the Mandalay. I've never been there myself. I've only seen pictures of it. Yeah. But I mean, you're People talking. Are silly, you're talk yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I was going to say, well, the one thing I was going to say, you're talking about not knowing until somebody funny flipped on the TV. I'm like, I'm, I'm one of the worst examples of that. I was one of the last people to find out about 9 11. Oh, wow. And you had someone, because and you were directly affected too. Yeah, I, I had multiple people, like one family member and other like really close family friends, like their family members. So like a lot of people, you know, a bunch of people I knew, um, but I didn't I didn't find out until noon that day. Oh, wow. Because I was locked away in my office by myself, listening to repeats of Howard Stern, uh, st st streaming repeats of Stern in, in my office, building computers. And everybody in my office ran downstairs to watch the TV in the deli, but they forgot that I was back there. So nobody came and got me. <laughs> and I had no idea until I finally went down to get a drink. And I'm like, what's everybody all upset about? <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 was, I remember that day I was freaking out. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on here? Um, I, I, like, I had school that day, uh, college. Um, it was like it was like the first like week or two of school, you know, and, and I was taking uh, like Photoshop and uh, Dreamweaver. You remember mm. when Dreamweaver was a thing? Yeah. Yes, I uh, do. My, my, <laughs> the, 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 the web designer for my for my for my business website, which was possibly even more offensive than the original Seeds of Liberty website. <laughs> Um, she's a very good friend of mine. She, she, she's, she's a very good, you know, very good friend of mine. And I've known this girl forever. Um, but she, uh, I remember that was her big, th I remember when she was big into that, when Dreamweaver became a thing and she was like, I have to learn everything about this. This is going to be my new, this is, this is how I'm going to make my millions essentially because she <laughs> used that to make all of her websites. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my, um, I was still staying with my parents at the time, you know, cause it's early two thousands, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, we're talking yeah. about almost twenty years ago at this point. Jesus, yeah. man. And uh, I remember he, he he was like, "Hey, wake up! The you know you should come check this out. Like there's a, there's a there's a plane stuck in one of the one of the World Trade Center buildings in New York." And I was like, "What?" And I remember like going and see it and seeing like watching it. And then all of a sudden, you just see the little explosion out of the bottom corner of the screen, and we're like, "What the hell was that? Like another explosion?" <laughs> and then that's whenever that's when it kind of was sinking in, like. Oh fuck, we're under attack, <laughs> and you know. Yeah, this, this but I had to go to school. <laughs> like that's scary. I don't, you know. Ooh, I don't know if someone's gonna start shooting up or bombing the school. You know. Yeah. <sighs> well, it's like it's like you know. I, I get that. I mean, it's yeah. like the old uh, one of one of Leary's old, Dennis Leary's old jokes about you know why people why people watch so much TV. It's like, Jesus Christ, man, back in the sixties, we watched somebody get shot live on TV. We never wanted to change a channel after that. That's why people <laughs> sit through the commercials. They're like, uh, it's like, I'm going to get up to get a drink. Nah, man. Uh, somebody, get, somebody get their head blown off during the commercial. I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember there was a, um, and I'm sure you can, I think there's still video of it uh, on YouTube or whatever. Uh, but there was a guy who um, was on the overpass in LA and they interrupted cartoons on all stations because he started throwing like Molotov cocktails and stuff and making a big scene. And then when the hell, you know, the news helicopters started to come around, he started to, he laid out this big banner. This is like HMOs are only in it for the money. And everybody was like, what the heck is going on? 
And then, uh, you know, he set his car on fire, and I guess he had a dog in there. He set his car on fire, and the dog, you know, was stuck in there. And, um, you know, he stands over the edge of the building. Like, he drops, like, a bag. And then you can see him, like, contemplating for a while. And then he's like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> so you you uh-huh. can totally tell, like, he wanted to jump, but they didn't know. And they're like, oh, what is he going back into his car for? And he gets a shotgun out, you know, and he puts the shotgun down on the, um, the center divider type thing. And then blows his brain out. Like you see, like the top of his head flip open, and his brain squirt everywhere. Yeah. They interrupted Spider Man for that, and I remember going like, "Holy <laughs> shit! TV is awesome." You know, <laughs> like, yeah, but yeah, that was I, nuts. I, rem- I remember that story, but I don't think I caught that one live. Yeah. I think the, I think the only, I think the only event I ever caught, I guess you know, quote unquote, live on TV like that was the one that pissed me off the most was when the OJ trial interrupted the Knicks. Um, was it the finals that they were in when that happened? I don't know. I think it was the You're Knicks Spurs. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I think it was. The, I think it's when the, I think it was the Knicks Spurs in the finals um, when they got the, when the Knicks got their asses stomped. But I was so because I remember coming home early that day from work or school or whatever it was just to make sure I could watch the game. And then all because it was they were playing some day game. They were totally screwing with the schedule originally and having a day game for the NBA Finals, which wasn't normal. And uh, all of a sudden, I get interrupted for that. I just. Remember, I remember, like I had this seething hatred for OJ after that, and not because I thought he killed those two people, just because he ruined my chance to actually watch the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, he ruined TV for a long time. Like I remember growing up, just going like, "Is there anything else on besides this damn trial?" He did it. Damn it, get it over. With, you know. Well, that was that was the aftermath. It was the ch- it was the chase that interrupted yeah. the the, uh, the. Yeah, I remember the finals. that too. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but and that, but it, and that it was didn't boring. stop then. It was that went on for oh, no, like yeah, a was, year. <laughs> oh yeah, the next the next yeah, exactly the next year was that. But yeah, but that was the boring thing. Like you're talking about you got you know you're talking about the the guy interrupting blowing his brains out. You talk about the Kennedy thing. People watching Kennedy get his brains blown out. What did I get to watch? OJ OJ and Cowan's driving a white bronco for what seemed like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours it's like god damn but i want to see the knicks get stomped exactly. <laughs> yeah uh i think but, yeah. we covered most of them so far oh yeah there was um there was so I, I, molyneux we might as well talk about molyneux because this is lulbert's we need to bash him of course uh he did like this video and i didn't watch the whole thing but i started watching it and then when he started saying like you know, like they said that he didn't have ties. To, you know, the FBI said he didn't have ties to ISIS. But oh, you know, you said you said you didn't. Uh, you still are investigating Trump for ties to Russia, and you still don't know. And it's like, dude, this that guy is like deliberately not paying attention now, at all. <laughs> the, the FBI did come out and say like tr- Trump has no connection to Russia. They did. <laughs> the only thing that they were yeah, doing now was saying I like Radowski does. But the Trump administration and the tr- and Trump and his campaign did not. It was just one guy, and uh, that was pretty much it. I think it was like one other guy that might have had like spurious connections, but it was Radowski. I think I'm saying his name right. Am I? I, I hear that. I think of Luke Radowski. I That's don't know what I'm thinking. I think I because I, I get those two names confused. Uh, but it was his campaign manager that lasted what like two months or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I think I, I, I don't remember. I can't remember his name now because I yeah. barely pay attention. But I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I, I was pretty sure the FBI had made that statement. But again, I don't pay enough attention to have. But Comey you know. said it during his hearing. He said like, yeah, it's all bullshit. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. But yeah, he missed that part. So I mean, there's. It, it still seems that there's no connection at all uh, to any kind of radicalized anything. I, I, yeah, I I didn't even know that much. I, I I the only thing I had thought the only thing I had heard was that ISIS themselves allegedly claimed that he was yeah that they, 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 they do were, that all the time yeah they, they were claiming well of course why not yeah if okay if you're the ele- same thing too <laughs> yeah if yeah. if your purport if your purported goal is to strike fear in the hearts of the infidels or whatever whatever it is you're railing against. Then why wouldn't you take credit for just about everything yeah. out there, especially if it's a situation like this, which is one of the few things that can usually actually rock, uh, you know, quote unquote Americans, because you know they never seem to care when thing when atrocities happen all over the world. I mean, some of them, some of them may make you know 
put change their uh, Facebook, you know, put a Facebook <laughs> filter on to claim that they're um, hey, standing. In I had the Vegas Golden Knights uh, avatar long before that happened, so I'm just saying. Well, <laughs> I, I I know, <laughs> um, but but for the for the large part, most people don't really care that much when it happens. This is one of the only things that when it happens on you know on U.S. soil, that's mm. when people actually care. So of course, if that's if that's what your purported goal is, and I'm going to keep saying purported goal because I'm still not convinced that ISIS isn't almost fully a CIA creation or at least a really motherfucking happy accident. Um, oh yeah. But, it's, it's, it's definitely convenient. Yeah. So, uh, so, but if that's the goal, of course, why not take credit for all these things? But uh, you know, there's, I, I don't know. It's all, it's all misreporting, misdirection, underreporting, you know, overzealous reporting. It's a whole combination of things that people just cling on to and, if it, the the thing that just bothers me the most is some of the people that get swept up with the, the stuff, and I guess I shouldn't be surprised anymore. But it just still like it still makes me scratch my head. Like some people that I consider pretty solidly grounded in you know logic for the most part, because a lot of their arguments for other things they you know they they understand how to make them, and it's not just they're repeating it; they've actually thought these through. And but when they still go off the deep end about this stuff, and it's like they're most people when it when it comes down to it, their thing is. You know, if you take away all the other bullshit, the underlying premise is essentially government is covering something up. Government is always yeah. bad. Therefore, we can't believe it. It's like, OK, you're supposed to be a logical thinker, right? Yes. OK. <laughs> you do realize that that's a logical fallacy, right? What is that? That's the composite. I always forget. It's either the composition or the division or or one of the other ones. But it's, you know, it, it, just because some just because one part of it is bad, um, everything must be bad. You know, it's like, no, that, that's not how this works. I guess it's kind of poisoning the well because you're saying, well, that's what the government says. <laughs> yeah, well, the, gover too. the government says the sky is blue. I guess it's yeah. it's red and green polka dot, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and the other thing that really bugs me is that people are always like, man, the government sucks at everything. They can't, they can't do welfare. They can't do immigration. They can't do wars. They can't do this. They can't do that. They just suck at everything. And you want to hand them more power? That's absolutely crazy. They're going to screw everything up. But somehow they managed to get everything right for 9-11, for Sandy Hook, for, <laughs> like, for the JFK assassination. Like, you name it. They, they had everything down they had everybody paid off like nobody says a word about any of it everybody's lips are sealed you know but well, if someone someone gets their dick sucked in the oval office and everybody's squealing it doesn't make any sense <laughs> you know <laughs> you know well yeah no, not, in the, not in the good kind of squealing during blowjobs like, <laughs> Well, I, I would agree with that. To, well, to a, to an extent, o, o, the only caveat I, I put in there is, you know, when, when you do look back at history, yeah, I mean, it does it seem likely that people would be able to cover certain things up? No, of course not. But on the other hand, you do have to take into consideration things like, say, well, the Manhattan Project. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there was, I think the accounts I've read, and I've read, I've tried to read from as many different sources as I possibly could. So I was trying to get like as, as least amount of bias and, you know, or at least, you know, all the bias, all the different types of bias so I could try to sort through it. And I think I remember that their numbers being somewhere up around in total, something like a million different people worked on that project. But, you know, 90 plus percent of them had no idea what they were doing. Yeah. Um, because they were just compartmentalized and they were factory workers or they were office people or yeah, whatever. They were making and they were sure the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah. that is that is the only thing that, yeah, do I think that, that whatever, the monolithic t title of quote-unquote government is capable of lining everything up to make all this, all like different events like this happen? No. Do I think parts of it could be orchestrated and it's not you know just dismissing it because oh they wouldn't be able to cover it up well they covered up something as massive you know i read is you know going back to the manhattan project thing there was one woman i read one of the last things i was reading up on this a year or two ago there was one woman who came out with a story like you know 50 years later that had no idea and only only uh um, figured out that she had been part of this whole thing because somebody ended up showing her a picture from a newspaper back then when she had been photographed in the factory that she was working. And she's like, oh, oh my God, that's me. That that was me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, so it, it is possible for some of these things, but 
more likely than not, I mean, I try to fall on the Occam's razor size. And what's, you know, what's the more likely scenario? Yeah. The more likely scenario is some bad shit happened and government took advantage of the bad thing happening right. because, well, never let a good crisis go to waste. Of course, yeah. I mean, they wanted to bomb Iraq from the very beginning and then that just exactly. fell in their lap. And they were talking about, like, we need another Pearl Harbor event. And it just happened to happen on their watch. And they're like, sweet. I mean, terrible they died, but sweet. We get to do what we want now. <laughs> like this is, We get to lock down airports. We get to we get to surveillance everybody, you know, and everybody's willing to do it. Everybody wants to hands or handing it right over gleefully, gleefully handing over their rights. Um, no, but I think I think the real big difference between something like 9-11 and the Manhattan Project is that they were, you know, they they, they were going to have to end up coming out with it eventually because you know they blew up you know two cities in in japan with this bomb and that's when they started going like oh this is how we did it we had this project called the manhattan project and we did and they ex basically expelled it out but the difference between 9 11 is that you still have all those people they're still alive they're still eventually gonna you know find out like oh but i did that wait a minute you know just like this lady did mm -hmm. no one's coming forward <laughs> like no one's had a no one even in the higher ups who did know stuff is having a there's got to be someone that's having like yeah oh my oh, god I i'm responsible for three thousand people dying like holy fuck i'm a monster like no one's having that moment nobody no i I, yeah. no, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I i agree with that although the conspiracy theorist would tell you because well, most of those people have been killed already yeah. <laughs> Because any, anybody who tries to come forward mysteriously dies. Uh, you know? Well, there's this thing called the internet, and it's impossible to scrub things off the internet. Ask Molyneux. He tried. Uh, <laughs> he gave it his damnedest. It didn't work. Um, yeah. I mean, to an extent, like, you know, government can do stuff like that, but they're extremely inefficient, so that's why they have to keep, you know, one hand from the other. But at the same time, that doesn't always work. Take, for example, from what I've been kind of looking into now, the Oklahoma City bombing, uh, and what happened just, re I think we talked about it in one of the episodes where the Oklahoma City bombing was basically getting these guys to come together and try to bomb it so that they can, you know, swipe up some of these sovereign citizen people and throw them in jail, you know, because, you know, get them riled up to do it. And then once everything was into play, you know, the bomb didn't work and they can just arrest them. But because yeah. the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, shit happened and, and it actually, the, the bomb went through. Um so there's a lot of things where that, you know, doesn't really work out. But then there's times where it does work, where it just happened, you know, just this year it was the same thing. Some guy in Oklahoma, they were trying to get, they were trying, they were fishing to try to get them to blow something up. And they got someone um, and the bomb didn't work. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, so yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying it's completely out of the realm, but for something that massive and they're just, and they're like, oh, and they, they plant, you know, thermite on all the all the buildings and no one noticed and and they had all these people who were diverted onto different planes and you know they were off and no one noticed like come on this has got to be that has to be like something like t in the or order of the magnitude of like tens of thousands of people orchestrating this thing uh and they could they could pull that off but somehow they can't pull off you know covering up a, a blowjob it just <laughs> you know there's, there's there's some things they can do and there's some things they can't that's definitely not one of them, in my opinion. No, I think yes. Yeah. I would agree with that. But it, but it was very convenient. That that's for sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm not I'm not well, denying that. That's for sure. Well, that, actually, you know, that's funny. That, that that is what the the latest going going back to the, the the original event we're talking about here with you know what happened in Vegas a couple of days ago was the one the one theory I heard most recently, and I only caught like a couple of conversations going on about this and i quickly ran away from it was <laughs> this was a government setup because they're trying th th this is how they're going to get the f they're finally going to get the guilty plea in the bundy case in the what the bundy case there there is some way somehow that they were tying this to the wow. to the bundy situation and they were finally going to get these guys like because they're you know that thing's still ongoing and ongoing and ongoing because they keep retrying them um this is how they're going to finally get it. I was like, oh, man, are you guys reaching? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that he was a part of everything, that he was a Bernie bro, that he was uh, you know, a pussy hatter, that he was a Trumpkin, that he was a uh, – I heard that one, but I didn't, I didn't hear like that was <laughs> – that they were trying to do that. They just heard that, that he was involved in the Bundy Ranch thing, and that was – all of them are just made up. Like there's no evidence for any of them. It's just – we're just going to say that he is. We're going to find some spurious pictures of some guy that kind of looks like him at one of these events and use that as our evidence. Like, come on. 
Like, we yeah, don't know well. anything about this dude. And it seems as though it just seems like he just snapped. That's that's the only thing that we got so far. You know, he was a crazy dude that snapped. You know, and I know Molony was trying to, like, he had abusive parents. It's like, dude, you had abusive parents, too, but I don't see you, you know, at the top of the Bellagio spraying down <laughs> on people watching the, the, the waterworks. But anyway. Yeah, exactly. Well. Oh, yeah, it was the other one, drugs. Psych drugs, because psych drugs, they'll say on there, causes sui- it can lead to suicide. But all the drugs that you know that say that are are for for symptoms, or they're for things that would lead someone to commit suicide anyway. So like depression, you know those things. I was like, it leads to suicide. Like, well, this stuff causes suicide. But yeah, so does the depression that they're taking it for. So you can't really nail yeah. it to that. So, um, you know, it, I don't know. It's all stupid. Yeah. And- yeah, and and the other and the other part of those have those have those side effects listed because maybe at one point one person did, and it's yeah. the company covering their rear end because well, okay, this is theoretically a possibility, so mm-hmm. we have to put it out there. That doesn't necessarily mean that everybody who takes them is going to have the same you know have the same outcome. Yeah, you know, and I mean, yeah, there's I mean, there's been a lot of talk about that. All all the shooters that for for all these mass shootings that have happened over the last couple of decades now you know they're always seem you know people are always trying to make that link and there always seems to you know i i I, there's always a meme there's memes floating around all the time after every new one that says oh out of all the out of however many you know 30 something mass shooters you know 29 of them have all been on these drugs because maybe 20 of them 29 of them are crazy enough to shoot up a place that they would might be seen by a doctor that goes like yeah dude you're fucking crazy take these pills (laughs) you know that's is not maybe the more likely reason but no it's got to be the drugs it's you know that it's it's part of the whole anti-psych thing Look, like Thomas says, and I know he he died not too long ago, and he he really is kind of a libertarian guy, and you know like the stuff that he talks about where you just can't, and I agree with with them like there's certain some things you just can't just lock people up for you know because you're in, you're invading their kind of space, but some people are criminally insane and you you there you just can't let them run in society at the same time, so it's kind of like oh, I don't know. And then he was also working a lot with this Church of Scientology. And this Church of Scientology is way more radicalized in their anti-psych stances than Saz was. So, yeah. <laughs> well, so you get a yeah. lot of you know Scientology kind of conspiracy mongering too. So, yep, 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 yep. So I guess that's it. You got anything you want to talk about? <laughs> Not that it's a formal Wolberts episode. You know, this is going just yeah. going to go on Patreon and YouTube, and that's it. Not even going to go on the main Lulbert's feed. Just want to make sure that everything, my new setup works. It seems to be working. But well, that's that's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, nah, man, I'm just uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Worms. Yeah. 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 Don't shoot people. Yeah. Just don't. A good, a good rule of thumb. <laughs> All right, man. Worms. Worms.